All right, into the sewers. It's an Elder Scrolls game. It wouldn't be right if we didn't at least get some small dose of the sewers, right? One way or another. And here we go. I guess this is another part of Brenyolf's initiation or, or something. That basically I'm down here, and if you can make it to me, then then we'll talk. All right, well, I don't know, that's what we'll have to do. Clear out all the baddies along the way. We're going to have to make this trip a couple times, coming in and out, till we get actually become a member of the Thieves Guild. Then there's uh, something of a backdoor ladder out of there, which makes it a little quicker. But for now, we're kind of stuck with this. Yeah, take that. Take that. Back off. <laughs> get to stepping. <laughs> Now, you guys may think, um, depending on how you've uh, built your characters, that I, you know, for this level, that I may have a an amount of stamina. It's still running out. Okay, I want to get comfortable where I can uh, spam power attacks until something's dead without essentially running out of stamina. I, I don't think there's really such thing as too much. It's uh, there's nothing so complicated in the character build or the combat mechanics that scales damage off stamina necessarily except in your ability to execute lots and lots of power attacks but um and now we're, we're just using swords if i do move up to axes uh, which i may um because i like the staggering although i mentioned before i'm really not a big fan of the way the iron axes look but whatever um if i ever move up to those they're going to use more stamina uh, now maces are just you know, ridiculous. I mean, they just they just eat your entire stamina pool almost instantly, and they're a little bit slower. But they uh they will stagger and they will stun and they will knock a dude on his ass. They will do that. But um anyway, still need more. We'll probably buff at least one one piece of armor. Um, we got our chanting skills up, and once you get uh, the perk where you get twenty five percent better enchantments on anything related to, what is it, health, magic, or stamina, or whatever. Once you get that in there, and, and you get your um, enchantment skill way up, and then maybe if you can drop an enchantment potion, and put something decent on a piece of gear. It's a substantial amount. I think you can get up into the, oh, I don't know, 60 or 70 range, something like that, on a single piece of gear. And that's a lot. That's, oh, what, six or seven levels worth of uh, stamina right there. And so may throw one on there. Um, at least now. Now... At much higher levels, you get into the, you know, 50, 60 range. I'll have enough stamina in my base stamina pool and my stamina regen, which also increases little by little um, as you level. It'll be high enough to where it, it, it won't be an issue. But when I can put a nice stamina buff on and uh, really, really put some work in, then uh, fighting will be a little bit easier. You tell him, Uthgur. This dude right here hits so hard. I'm, I'm jealous of his boxing game. I really am. He will, he will two shot me with his fist. Actually, he has some special gloves or something, which uh, I could break down. It's nothing I would ever waste an enchantment spot on my gear for, but it allows you to do more damage uh, fighting. I guess I could, I could uh, keep a, a spare set of boxing mitts <laughs> off to the side. If I, if I ever decide to brawl or whatever. But yeah, those gloves are the pugilist. All I really care about is being able to break them down. It's a new enchantment that I can learn at the altar. It's, it's fine for me. Now on the heavy armor tree... Isn't there a perk that, that also allows you to do more unarmed damage? Barehanded damage or, or something? I guess, I wonder if that, that would stack with the, you know, this, whatever the enchantment's called on those gloves of the pugilist. Put that on, I wonder if they stack. They probably do. Become a hell of a boxer in heavy armor. Whoa, 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 sounds... I don't remember that trap. Yep, there it is, right there. Huh, alright. Well, forgot about that one. There's always a butterfly 
on this, uh, I guess, a beheading axe. That's what it looks like. There's probably some story behind that right there. I don't know what it is, but... Okay, I guess this is the last of uh, the enemies we might have to face. I think there's a skill book sitting on the table. I'm gonna want that. Yeah, that one just looks cool. Maybe not as cool as the beheading one, though. I do have that perk, so I'm waiting for some more of those to trigger. I believe it requires a critical hit on the actual kill. I believe that's what um, dictates getting a kill animation or not. I believe that's the case. There's also a pathway to another part. I think it's actually in the Thieves' Guild itself. The back part, but it's like, oh, what's it called? The, the vaults or something? The rat wave? Anyway, we'll have to go there much later in the game, in the actual story. But uh, there's a spot down there where there's a group of bandits, and I always find this bow that belongs to this farmer along the edge of the lake, right here next to Riffin. Riffin Ripton. And I think there's a skill book down there and a few treasure chests too. Other bandits hold up down here trying to edge in on the Thieves Guild business or something. Well, well. Color me impressed, lass. I wasn't certain I'd ever see you again. Reliable and headstrong? You're turning out to be quite the prize. So... Now that I've whetted your appetite with our little scheme at the market, how about handling a few deadbeats for me? They owe our organization some serious coin, and they've decided not to pay. I want you to explain to them the error of their ways. Kirava, Bursi Honeyhand, and Helga. Do this right, and I can promise you a permanent place in our organization. Honestly, the debt is secondary here. What's more important is that you get the message across that we aren't to be ignored. A word of warning, though. I don't want any of them killed. Bad for business. Good. If you need any details on your marks, I'll be here. Now get going. Okay, I remember this. I'll be here when you're done. Nothing hard about this once you've done it once or twice, but um, instead of naming this video Ratway, how to name this video Loading Screens, we are going to be going through a bunch of loading screens. For you guys, I edit them out. I try to take out the, uh, oh geez, in some, of the, in some cases it's 30, 40 seconds. I have a uh, pretty cool hard drive in my PS3. Spins at a lot higher RPM. It's... Uh, has a uh, pretty decent cache there. It's it's supposed to increase, and, and in some cases it seems like it does. I can compare this to my uh, old hard drive in the PS3 and my experience with Xbox, and I would say that the load screens are, oh well, yeah, they're cut down a little at certain times, but uh, there there are just places where it just wow. And then if you have to, I don't know, maybe it just seems like once you've gone through about ten in a row within like a couple minute time span that they just seem to get real long. But uh, there's quite a few of them here. Okay, we you know there's a couple just coming in and out of the rat way, and then we have to go uh, visit what three different places, going in and out of each one of those. We have to go to the inn and then uh, the well, I don't know if you call it the whorehouse here in town, sort of. Although the it seems to be a uh, oh well, I don't want to say anything derogatory. It just seems to be one one girl that's running the whole thing there. Although there's another girl there um, who's like her, I don't know, niece or something. And I don't know if she's trying to train her to be a, uh, a man pleaser of sorts. But uh, anyway, whatever their story is, it's sort of the uh, brothel, kinda. And then uh, gotta go deal with uh, the basically the town pawn shop. Actually a decent little shop. Lots of a uh, market here if you think about it. You have the several merchants right there in the middle. And then you have the, the pawn shop off to the side, and it's a relatively small town. And then you have the Thieves Guild itself with all the, 
Global Defense and the Future Merchants, which which would be there. If you're looking for a room, what did you want? What does he want now? I already explained to him that you can't get blood from a stone. Look, I can't make the coin appear out of thin air. Please, be reasonable. I'll... I'll pay next month. And so have I. What's the point of paying anyway? Your outfit can't even fend for itself. I could do better tossing the gold into the sewer. You can't scare me with your tough talk. I'm not paying you people a single coin. Wonder what the debts are for. I'm not a fan of protection rackets, so I do not approve of that. Please, don't take the statue. It's the only thing of value I have left. Not Lady Debella. No, please, I can't lose her. I get the message. Here, take your gold. I hope you choke on it. Okay, so her service to Debella is to essentially sleep with everyone's husband in town or something? I don't know. Whatever, do your thing, lady. Here's the house that you can buy. I actually do like this house. It's pretty cool. Lakeside. Lakeside Manor kind of thing. I think there's actually a house you could build called the Lakeside Manor. Is that right? With the Hearthfire DLC and all that? I know there's several plots of land you can get. My husband, Bercy, will be the death of me. He spends too much time worrying about Riften and not enough about himself. So, can I interest you in anything today? What? Oh, it's one of you people. So Brynjolf doesn't even bother to show up himself anymore, eh? What's this message? Petty threats and fist-waving are not going to sway me. You people are all talk, and everyone knows it. You demand payment for protection, and you can't even protect yourselves. Don't fool yourself. It's only a matter of time before you people are run out of Riften. Likewise. Now I have a lot to do, so I'm afraid you'll just have to leave. No, I'm afraid I'm just going to have to... Bust your vase into pieces over here. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> no! That urn was priceless. All right, I get it. I'll pay on time from now on. Just don't smash anything else. Here, take your gold. And leave me in peace. Now we go get to deal with one of my favorites here. I don't like strong strong arming this lady, this uh this lizard here in the inn. She's very cool. She grins at me, uh, just awesome. If your allegiance lies with the Empire, we haven't much to here She's grinning. Room or something to drink. <laughs> sure. Look, everything was all just a misunderstanding. I didn't mean to tell Brynjolf to go jump off the pier. You'll tell him I'm sorry, yes? Take this. Every single coin I owe is there. I swear it. Yeah, what do you want? If this is about the metering, we can... Now the lizards don't like me in the end, though. That kind of sucks. I always wondered if saving them for last and not actually having to threaten them with anything or destroy any of their stuff or whatever, if that might sure, keep them sure. from, uh... I'm a dirty beggar. Why would you want to even speak to disliking me, but oh well. Actually, might head off into the keep there uh, later on and do some disenchanting. I know they have an enchanting table right there. They have a court wizard, too, who sells... Uh, it's all the same stuff Farangar does. Books and gems and stuff. Someone to sell things like rings and stuff, too. That's another merchant, actually, come think of it. A lot of merchants here in Riften. Say, if you count the fences and the merchants, which will be down here, too, uh, that's pretty nice. Okay. How about just getting lost in the right way? There we go.
Stay out of trouble, or there's gonna be trouble. You'd better have coin to pay for your drinks. There's no handouts here. So, job's done and you even brought the gold. Best of... Well done. And it would seem I owe you something in return. Here you go. I think you'll find these quite useful. Judging from how well you've handled those shopkeepers, I'd say you've done more than simply prove yourself. We need people like you in our outfit. That's the spirit. Larceny's in your blood. The telltale sign of a practice thief. I think you'll do more than just fit in around here. What's on your mind? We've run into a rough patch lately, but it's nothing to be concerned about. Tell you what, you keep making us coin, and I'll worry about everything else. Fair enough? Now, if there are no more questions, how about following me and I'll show you what we're all about? After you talk to Brynjolf and Mercer, come back and see me. Alright, I guess we get to go join the Thieves Guild proper now. At some point we'll come back and talk to Vex and... Delvin? Delvin? Mallory? Maybe that's his name, Delvin. Now, as far as doing all the jobs here, there's there's even a trophy for it or an achievement if you're playing on Xbox. Um, for uh, restoring the Thieves Guild to its former glory, it requires doing a bunch of their little side tasks in each in each of the major cities. Um, we'll talk about it more in a minute, but uh, basically just Riften, Markarth, Whiterun. Uh, the little ones like uh, Morthal, Dawnstar, they don't count. Uh, Falkreath, th those don't count. It's, it's only the major holds. Basically the ones where you can buy a house. Not counting Hearthfire and all that. Just the ones that have a house in them. Those are considered the major holds. Solitude. And uh, you do a certain number of their uh, little tasks in each city. And then you eventually unlock the ability to do one main quest for somebody. And then uh, you'll usually unlock that person as a fence, also. This is the one I was talking about. Our new recruit. This better not be another waste of the guild's resources, Brynjolf. Before we continue, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. If you play by the rules, I'm you walk the away rich. But you break the rules and you around. lose your share. I'm the one they send no debates, in. No discussions. What we say, when we do I make myself clear? Oh, what was that? Mouth? I'll let that comment go because you're new here. Oh, will you? Ask oh, things uh, appreciate that. Problem. Now, are we clear on all of this? No, let's go and see what that problem is. If you're not sure, maybe you don't belong here. I'll ask again. Are we clear on all of this? Oh, so there's a way to instigate him a little further. Good, then I think it's time we put your expertise to the test. Wait a moment. You're not talking about Golden Glow, are you? Even our little Vex couldn't get in. You claim this recruit possesses an aptitude for our line of work. So let her prove it. Golden Glow Estate is critically important to one of our largest clients. However, the owner has suddenly decided to take matters into his own hands and shut us out. He needs to be taught a lesson. Brynjolf will provide you with the details. Mercer, aren't you forgetting something? Hmm? Oh, yes. Since Brynjolf assures me you'll be nothing but a benefit to us, then you're in. Welcome to the Thieves' Guild. Welcome to the family, lass. I'm expecting you to make us a lot of coin, so don't disappoint me. Simple. Do as you're told and keep your blade clean. We can't turn a profit by killing. You should talk with Delvin, Mallory, and Vex. They know their way around this place, and they'll be able to kick some extra jobs your way. Oh, and talk to Tonelia in the flagon. She'll set you up with your new armor. Golden Glow Estate is a bee farm. They raise the wretched little things for honey. It's owned by some smart-mouthed wood elf named Arangoth. 
We need you to teach him a lesson by burning down three of the estate's hives and clearing out the safe in the main house. The catch is that you can't burn the whole place to the ground. That important client Mercer mentioned would be furious if you did. Aye. The last thing we want to be doing is crossing our clients. Maven prefers that Arangoth remains alive, but if he tries to stop you from getting the job done, kill him. The guild has a lot riding on this. Don't make me look foolish by mucking it up. They're built like small fortresses to resist the weather, but their one weakness is flame. Besides, nothing tells the people of Riften we mean business better than a huge column of smoke. I'll give you one good reason. Maven Blackbriar. Burn all the hives, and she'd have to import honey for Blackbriar meadery, which would cut into her profits. We had an arrangement with Maven. We kept an eye on Golden Glow Estate to make sure the honey kept flowing. If the workers had a dispute, we'd rough them up. If competitors tried to buy honey from Arangoth, we'd steal the shipments. In return, Maven allowed us to extort Arangoth and bring in a huge payout. Let me put it to you this way. Nothing happens in Riften without Maven's consent. One word from her, and you could spend the rest of the Fourth Era in prison. You watch yourself on that island. Those mercenaries don't take prisoners. Yeah, they really are a group of deadbeats, and they really okay, couldn't so take care of themselves. Sliding steadily backwards, and uh... Okay, if I gotta come in and, and write this entire ship from scratch, essentially, and uh... Get rid of whatever's causing this problem here. Then I better be running the show when when this is all said and done. I do like this storyline. This is uh, this is one that was pretty well done in the game. This has the Elder Scrolls feel to it. The whole, you know, backstory to this entire thing, and then uncovering uh, the plot as you go along, and then uh, dealing with it, fixing it, and then getting to uh, become head honcho when it's all over. That type of stuff. That's that's pretty cool. Dark Brotherhood was done all right. Um, I guess I was a little spoiled by the whole uh, Dark Brotherhood thing in Oblivion, though. That was that was pretty that was pretty epic. <laughs> Lucian Lachance and all that stuff. At least they make a nod towards him. In the Dark Brotherhood here, you get uh, basically his ghost as a reward, as a helper if you want. Being all creepy and everything. All right. Well, anyway, we'll see that when we get there. All these free chests, and then there's quite busy. Come here, uh, whatever, Sam. dude. But this dude talks way too much smack, man. There's a bunch of chests that you can practice on here too. I guess I can talk to a few people. Something to you. Pull up a chair, my friend. This is quite a tale. When I started out in this business, I wasn't really interested in the guild or being a thief. I didn't mean to imply I was earning an honest living, either. With my lock-picking aptitude, I was a natural at jailbreaking. I made a great deal of gold doing it, too. It's where a client pays you to get arrested, and you get thrown into a prison for the express purpose of breaking out. Usually it's to free someone the client cares about, and sometimes to... well, to kill someone on their behalf. Either way, the trick was in the escape, and that's where my strengths came in handy. Well, as a jailbreaker, you work alone. No guild to back you up. I do jobs for the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood, but if things didn't go as planned, I was on my own. And the last jailbreak I attempted failed. I was imprisoned in High Rock for three years before they let me go. After that, I promised myself I'd never do it again. I don't know. I think I realized that out in the world, my skills would bring me more wealth as a thief rather than an assassin. Killing someone in a jail is much easier than what the Dark Brotherhood deals with. 
I guess I wanted to play it safe. I already knew Delvin. I asked if I could join up, and that was that. Some other time, perhaps. If you need marksman training, and you've got the coin, I'm ready to teach you. I believe everyone here has their own little story. I think I'm overall interested in. Sapphire has a pretty sad one. It's pretty messed up. Alright, and all these. And I believe these locks reset after what is what is it, like three in-game days? You know, whatever whatever it takes to recycle everything in in Skyrim. Um come back in here and exercise your locks lock pick skills again. So it's like a training room, I guess. Of course, I'm more interested in the loot, but I don't mind a few free lockpick points while I'm at it. Sometimes I actually get some decent stuff in here. Another thing is there's a full set of Thieves Guild armor scattered around. Notice there were some boots and gloves next to some of those beds out there, and I think there's like a hood in the armor, the main body armor itself in here, or something, anyway. Oh, they're good for loot. <laughs> Actually sellable, That's, as far as I'm concerned. But let's say you had uh, several houses, like let's, let's say you did Hearthfire. Or something, and you had like a house in every city, then you had all the houses you'd built, and blah blah blah, and you're going for this, you know, uh, this epic Skyrim playthrough or whatever, and you wanted a a, um, a full set of Thieves Guild armor for every dummy that you have. Well, essentially, every few days or so, you could come back here and probably find a set um, just laying around, put that together, and take it back to one of your houses and put it up on your uh, your mannequins. I don't believe that's the case with the with the Dark Brotherhood stuff, though. You see, there, at the entrance to the Dark Brotherhood sanctuary, there's um, there's a set of like shrouded shrouded robes and things like that. I, I don't think that responds. It might. It might actually. But uh, keep my eye out for that. And there is a way later on in the Dark Brotherhood story to get uh, multiple sets of their armor, too. If I recall correctly. I used to be a huge fan of collecting different, you know, unique items in the game. Like, you need set, unique sets of armor, of course, weapons and stuff like that, and then displaying them. Finding ways to uh, lay them out. Because uh, that really started in Oblivion. I would get a house and then I would start uh, finding, you know, you know, just unique stuff like Chillrend, which is a unique sword. Um, certain shields, Daedric, artifacts, all that kind of stuff. And then finding ways to, uh, you know, put them in display cases and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't recall weapon racks that you could use. I'm sure the uh, the PC modder guys, I'm sure they had all that stuff, but uh, vanilla game, I don't think there were weapon racks. There were display cases, but you had to like manually actually place your stuff on them and then find a way to get the lid, lid closed on those. That's what I remember with those things. So, anyway. One thing Skyrim offers is actual weapon racks themselves, so if you have all your nice collector swords and staves and stuff like that. Uh, there are one or two items, though. That refuse to be put on racks or in display cases. They will they will move themselves like they're possessed. Um, I believe it's the Sanguine Rose, or maybe it's the Skull of Corruption. One of the staves and the Ebony Blade. You can, you can put it on a weapon rack sometimes, but it will remove itself. Like you'll come back later and be late laying on the floor. I don't think it's a glitch. I think it's it's actually the item that just refuses to uh, to be put up, refuses to be bound or caged, <laughs> right? All right, we got a level. You know what that means? That means some more light armor training if I want. Although it's starting to get kind of expensive. It's in the 500 per point range now. And uh, see, this is why I'm I'm homeless. <laughs> I can't save enough money to get a house. I'm always spending it on other stupid stuff. 
Even though I don't really spend anything in the game, I still never have any money. Actually, I do. I, I, I buy gems early on. We need to hit some dwarven runes where I'll, I'll never run out of gems again, ever. They are just absolutely fabulous for that. Alright, so let me get uh, get my set of armor and sell the armor that I just picked up. Pawn off all my stolen junk. Well, looks like you and I are going to have to get very well acquainted. I'm the fence down here. You come by anything you don't exactly own, and I'll pay you some coin for it. Minus a little slice for the guild, of course. I can also provide a few supplies useful to our trade now and again. For a small fee. Sure. How about I get Dirge to knock you over your head and dump you into the cistern? Look, I've been in this business a long time, and I've seen all types. You can play it tough, or you can play it smart. Whatever. At the end of the day, you'll find that all we care about down here is how much gold you can make us. Good. Then there isn't much more to say. Here's your armor. Just make sure you put it to good use. Well, you could always speak to Delvin or Vex if you're looking for extra work. Or if you're looking for training, we've got plenty of it down here. Delvin, Vex, Nerowin, and Vipper can give you a leg up on that. Usual guild rate. Let's take a look at them. I don't recall her ever having any armor, but she's always got a pretty good selection of weapons and stuff. If you're missing an enchantment that you want to learn, odds are, or weapon enchantment anyway, odds are she might have it at some point. Expensive though. Expensive. Right, so I can get rid of all of my junk. First let's get rid of anything stolen. Actually worth some money. There we go. Good deal. So I'm going to be running around with all this just random armor junk until I buy a house. I need to get a house. I need to go again. Just for a place to put some stuff up. I don't know what it is with me. Is is I have these, these sets of things. I just can't get rid of them. I just can't sell them off. I'll, I'll never use them. May not even put them up. They'll probably be sitting in a box somewhere. But i got to have them. Don't ask me why. Don't judge me. Until next time. All right, so at least we have one fence available. The one, the one fence I am really, um, I really do kind of want to unlock is the, uh, is the one in the Windhelm Marketplace. Elf, elf girl. Do enough things in Windhelm for uh, Delvin and Vex, and uh, she, and then you eventually get to do her a favor once you do that then she becomes a fence. You have everything right there. You literally have a fence, enchanting table, alchemy shop, blacksmith, smelter, um, another extra merchant off to the side. Then just on the other side of Windhelm is another one, that pawn shop guy who wanted us to return, what was it, Viola's ring? And all that. I mean, it's just like right there. One stop shop for everything. And then if you, uh, and then of course there is a court wizard, which is a bit of a jog up to the top of Windhelm, but he's there if you need like a bunch of gems or something and Anyway, it's, or, or magic books or whatever. And, uh, speaking of that, Windhelm actually has a really nice house, too. It's pretty cool. It's probably the closest to the Skingrad house from Oblivion. Um, it's, I think it's the biggest of all the vanilla houses. It's, well, no, the one in Solitude is pretty big, too. I guess they're probably about the same. Look a little different. The one in Solitude has more of a, uh, oh, kind of a mansion feel. No, uh, I can't really even say that either. They're just a little different, but but I don't know, similar. Solitude is, is probably the nicest, actually. Especially when you like down in the basement with all the archways and stuff, and where your uh, enchanting shop is is set up. It's really cool. And the upstairs bedroom is all uh, luxurious and everything. The uh, the one in Windhelm is spacey. I guess that's it. It's just uh, just wide open. Big rooms. Like your bedroom is huge upstairs. Basically takes up all the upstairs. But uh, anyway. A few things I'd like to have right now that I'm just kind of on the verge of. There's actually one or two more bow skills I'd like. Um, we're getting up there and enchanting. 
Getting real close to getting some more uh, one-handed stuff too. There's one last one that just basically just buffs all dual wielding damage. And you start stacking that with everything else and you become effective. Once I get unlocked, I haven't found it yet, which is uh, surprising. Normally I find it early. I, I'm, I'm willing to actually buy it if I catch a merchant with something, but the enchantment on it is the, is the, uh, the obvious one-handed uh, extra damage. Get that and stack that on any piece of armor you can put it on. And, uh, it's, oh, I hear a dragon. I hear a dragon. All right. I'll be needing that dragon soul. Thank you very much. Thank you for the donations. Yep, I hear Mr. Flappy Wings himself. So anyway, get uh, the one-handed enchantment on anything we can put it on. And all that stacks, and then the extra bonus damage um, that you find on a couple of the skills in the one-handed tree. And then, of course, you know, upgrading your one-handed damage overall. you got to get it to, what, 80 to basically double your base one-handed damage. Some of those things um, that look good on paper really kind of suck in actual gameplay. Like, for example, if you're using swords, um, if you look up there, there's a passive on the one-handed tree that basically gives you an extra critical chance with swords. All right, But if, if you do criticals, the criticals it's talking about is a certain percentage of your base weapon damage without anything else factored in. And um, especially on this difficulty, Okay, with, with the weak sauce ass weapons that I'm using anyway, that's little or nothing. You're talking about a couple extra points, period. And it's just a chance to get a couple extra points. Now, true enough, if you get a higher chance to pull off a critical, you get a higher chance to pull off a kill animation. So if I just have points to throw away, I might put them in there anyway. I mean, two points of damage is better than no points of damage, I guess, right? But um, it's really kind of irrelevant overall. It's nothing I, I make a beeline for. It looks good on the surface, but... Uh, Overall, it's it's not really. Uh, there's another one. I think it's with axes. It's bleeding damage. That's a small percentage of your base weapon damage, also. So if you're using a really high damage weapon, it may be, you know, it may be worth taking. I guess even then, not really, in my opinion. But um, yeah, the extra critical with with your weapons, it's it does little or nothing for you, especially with low damage weapons like what I'm using. Considering the, the the base damage, the enchantments and the um, and the skills are where I'll get my damage from with this iron stuff. We're gonna find that iron is, I mean, obviously if it's lower damage, it's not gonna do as much damage as a higher damage weapon. Obviously, I mean, I get that. We'll find that it's it's basically just as effective as using you know the full Daedric or Dragon Bone or uh, or whatever sets and stuff. Um, Iron does just fine. Rego Longbow. If you enchant it right, you got your skills up, and you've got your uh, equipment with the uh, with the right perks on them and stuff. And it's it 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 does just fine. It does just fine. I think that the key for me, and I, I, I think I follow this logic on most builds in most games, is to find something and try to stick to it the best that I can. Not try to do a little of everything. Well, I'd like a little health, a little extra stamina, a little extra magic, a little this, a little that. And there's some things that I may need. Like if I'm not putting points into magic, I need to buff my magic. So you'll notice I've had some kind of magic buff on um, at some point or another on at least one piece of gear just to give myself just enough to summon my Achenak when I need it. That's about it. All right, but uh, no points in there. My attribute points are, I'm sinking them into health, so I can at least not get one shot by everything, hopefully. And uh, stamina, so that I can swing. That's what I, I need to do. I need to, to I need to swing. And so everything's invested in that. My gear also, like if I, uh, the magical buff, is, if it's a necessity, that's one thing. A convenience, just, well, I'd like a little extra magic. I'd like a little extra this and a little extra. No, 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 no. No, I just try to stay focused on pretty much what I'm doing. Nothing real rocket science about it in Skyrim, per se. I mean, pretty much, you know, whatever you do, just put all your points in that and you're good. But uh, on other games where it requires a little more thought in your skill trees and the way you combine all your abilities and, and find some kind of synergy, especially if it's a party-based thing like Dragon Age or Mass Effect, yeah, put some thought into it. And pick a path and stick to it. And the more you concentrate on just that and, and enhance what you do, you'll do it really well. If you try to be kind of the jack of all trades thing, you wind up sort of sucking at everything. You know, it's just you're not really good at any one thing. And uh, I'm not a big fan of playing like that, so. 
I think this is that little farm. I think the farmer here is the one that's missing that bow that you find down in the ratway. I don't know. Not going to pursue it. That's just something I remember. Trivia from recent playthroughs. All right. Well, um, I'm going to sneak into sneak into this little um, farm over here. Bee farm. From this side. Get into the back side. Go burn down those beehives. Get in there and um, find out what's up with this dude. While he's cutting uh, Maven out of her uh, out of her profits or whatever. Anyway, this is kind of where the Thieves Guild story really starts. Start to see what, you know, as the plot sickens in the background type of thing. I think I'm going to get Uthgur to stay right here. We'll just go ahead and solo this because I don't need her giving us away. We're going to be sneaky sneaks, so. We've stopped. What is it? She needs to go ahead and chill right here. Go on ahead. I'll stand guard. She's so cool. She's just like, down with whatever, man. Best follower. Best follower, in my opinion. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we will get into Golden Glow on the next one. All right, if you want to subscribe, click that button up top if you haven't. And if you want to catch the rest of this Let's Play up to this point, then click that image there in the middle. I think it'll take you to the playlist. So, all right, y'all take care. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.